I'm back for part two of our communion bread uh, baking videos. I'm Brother Brett, pastor to the people of Prince of Peace, Marlton, New Jersey. First video, we talked about how we make the communion bread. Second video here today, we're gonna to talk about um, how we're gonna bake it uh, and a little other information while it's baking in the oven. So we've had it sit out for um, uh, an hour and, uh, and meanwhile, we've had the oven uh, preheated to 500 degrees. Yes, I know it's very hot, but that's how this is cooked in particular. So now we um, need to prep the bread before it goes into the oven. And so uh, we mark uh, the pieces with uh, five or nine uh, holes. So the small ones, we do five. And these are for the five uh, wounds of Jesus um, in his side and the hands and the feet. And so we put it by the Christ. It is Jesus Christ Victor is what the um, Greek symbols mean. And this little one's just a little leftover dough one we did. Um, so, and so the larger ones Again, the five pieces. And then we do, over by these other crosses here on the outside, additional um, piercings. Can be common to say a prayer during these times. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me and on the whole world. All right, once they've pierced through, we're gonna put them in the oven. And so, uh, put them in the oven right away. I have a stone in there, you don't need a stone. Um, uh, but I have one. We're gonna set the timer to four minutes. It could be four or five minutes, it's a little bit of a, you know, uh, kind of have to look at it. But initially, I usually just do four. And you're going to be amazed to see when it comes out in four minutes how much they popped up. Now, they're not done in that time. We have to pierce them again because the holes will start to collapse. Uh, so we need to pierce again uh, so that the additional air can come out. The main reason we pierce them, there's a theological reason, but there's also um, uh, a process reason so that when we pierce the the bread, it allows the steam and the moisture to come out. Otherwise, like a normal loaf of bread, if you know you slice it, don't slice it down the top, it pops open, it breaks open. So this keeps it from the bread from actually cracking and creating uh, uh, big cracks down the center and keeps it all solid and together. And so it does have a, a practical reason. In the first video, I didn't mention uh, the meaning of the ingredients. Uh, and so I thought I would do that now during the first portion of this uh, video. <clears throat> so we use the two cups of flour, and uh, so remember that uh, every grain of wheat must die before it can sprout again, um, and that Christ is the wheat, um, and that's the predominant ingredient. Uh, and then um, Jesus again talks again and again about wheat and chaff, and about that part of us that is wheat and that part of us that is chaff that needs to be ground away. Uh, we add the salt, where Jesus tells us to be the salt of the earth. Um, we add sugar uh, in this particular version of the bread um, to talk about God's goodness and the sweetness of life, um, the goodness of, the, of our Lord. Uh, then the water, uh, that the waters of eternal life will come springing and gushing forth the waters that come for the healing of the nations. Um, and so the water, uh, the living water uh, that Jesus gives us comes to us when we receive communion. We use uh, yeast as a reminder that we will be uh, a little yeast. Uh, doesn't it only takes a little to leaven the whole loaf, as well as the rising agent, the reminder of the resurrection, and that we will all rise again. Uh, we add the rose water uh, in... Uh, honor and memory of Jesus' mother, Mary, 
and then the orange blossom water uh, about abundant life that God promises us, abundance of the fruits. The land will flow, overflow with milk and honey and the gifts of salvation. Um, and so uh, that's kind of some of the that little um, metaphorical meaning behind the ingredients uh, that we do. Um, one of the things that uh, um, is encouraged while you're doing this, in the last video I was speaking the whole time, but it's a great practice to while you're prepping the dough, mixing it, kneading it, pressing it, to be saying prayers for people. Um, or you can just, you know, um, Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. Um, or whatever simple prayer that you want to be saying as you do it. Sometimes if people do this in groups, uh, uh, someone will maybe read names for uh, uh, people who you're remembering in prayer, and uh, the person's name will be read, and then everyone else in the room responds, you know, Christ have mercy. And another name, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. So that's kind of a process encapsulated in prayer. So we have just a, a couple more seconds left here. Uh, and so uh, we'll take it out, use the hot pads, we'll pierce them again, they will be quite warm, so sometimes uh, the finger won't be okay, or sometimes I have to use the hot pad because the, the, um, the stick will stick a little bit. And this is just a little skewer. I don't use the pointed end, I use the flat end. I didn't mention that before. All right, turn that timer off. We're gonna pull the bread out. And you can see already how much it's puffed up. Right, and so it's pretty amazing how it's done that um, already. And usually the second holes, sometimes they're really easy and sometimes they stick. This one's doing pretty well. Now you can see, on this one here in particular, you can see the white flower that's still here. Um, once they cool, I use this brush over here to dust them off once they're done after the second baking uh, and all of the light flower comes off and I do that in the, over the sink or outside. I'm not going to show you that in the video, so they don't want to miss another four minutes of time just eating up, but I will take, I'll show you some pictures at the end what the final product looks like. All right, I think I've done all the holes here. It's talking, so I remember I got them all. All right, then um, it goes back in the oven for another four minutes. set the timer for four minutes uh, and then uh, we'll take a look at it again. They should become golden on top. Uh, sometimes at the end of four minutes they're not golden. Sometimes I always choose to keep them in another minute uh, or more. Sometimes I turn it off and turn on the broiler on high and just leave it right where it is. I don't raise it up and allow that to try to get a little more browning uh, on top. So it can kind of be done e either way, your choice of what you want to do. Um, uh, and then sometimes the little ones will need to come out first before the big ones. They'll get browner quicker before the little ones. Um, so I think we'll turn the video off now and then I'll do a third video um, when this is done in three minutes.